Life broadcast. I'm Pastor Ken. We're so glad that you joined in with us this evening. We're going to go right into our communion time. You know, we call this the meal that heals. Amen. And as we partake tonight, uh, just let your heart be sober before the Lord. Think about all the wonderful benefits he has given you in this great salvation. Amen. And uh, we understand that this is our prescription. Amen. This is part of the healing packet that the Spirit of God, amen, has given to us as his people. Jesus paid for it, and we receive it by way of the power of the Holy Spirit. And so as you partake tonight, amen, declare your healing, amen, declare that you're free tonight, amen, and let the body and the blood of Jesus Christ work within you both to will and to do of the good pleasure of the kingdom of God. And so Jesus said that my body is meat indeed. Amen. And that my blood is the drink that is needed to bring forth life. And so we eat the flesh of the Son of God and we drink his blood and we receive the life that the Spirit of God has given us in Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, we thank God that there is a healing balm tonight for us who believe. Amen. And uh, I don't know why this is so hard for me to get off tonight. But uh, 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 we're going to get there. And we receive, amen, the healing virtue power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, let us partake tonight of the bread and of the cup and say this with me. Father, I thank you for the finished work of Jesus Christ. And in that finished work, I have healing, wholeness, soundness, and wellness. And I believe it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's keep it together. In the cup. Amen. We've been looking at the uh, subject dealing with the covenant of healing, the covenant of healing, and uh, the word of God has so much to say about this privilege that we have in Jesus Christ and you know during this pandemic uh, I just feel in my heart this is just a wonderful time to not only uh, make our calling and election sure you know to take uh, introspection over our lives and uh, see where we are uh, in the kingdom of God in the word of God, in our relationship with the Lord. And um, there's so much talk of sickness and disease. And uh, we're going to have to stand our ground now and take what belongs to us. And I know that um, there have been uh, many uh, believers uh, to contact it, the coronavirus. Uh, thank God. Many have also been healed and raised up. Um, some have not, but uh, healing belongs to us. And one thing you don't want to do is you never want to base someone else's testimony on uh, your personal experience. Meaning, if, if something negative happened to myself or any other pastor or um, you know someone who you really looked up to, that, that doesn't have anything to do with your healing. Amen. Uh, many times uh, there are variegated circumstances um, that the devil plays on when it comes to sickness and disease. And, and many times um, those who've been in the uh, 
service of the Lord for a long period of time. Uh, many times it's, it's just a weariness and, and uh, they know what's ahead of them. They know to live for Christ, amen, uh, and to die is a gain. For them to live is, is Christ, amen. Their, their whole lives have been wrapped up in the things of God and, and to die is a gain. And so uh, many times when, when sickness and disease and pain hits the body, you know, people know that uh, they have a better day coming. And so don't use that as a uh, barometer for yourself. Amen. Healing belongs to us. Healing is the children's bread. We're not judging anybody. Amen. But uh, uh, as the Apostle Paul said, uh, it's better for you to stay here uh, right now because your family needs you. <laughs> Amen. People of God need you. Your church needs you. Amen. So you take your stand, amen, and you stake your claim in the secret place of the Most High, amen, and you abide under the shadow of El Shaddai, amen. So uh, let's look at Psalm 145, 145, verses 8 and 9. It says, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and great and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Amen. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is gracious. That word means he is disposed to favors. He is disposed to favors. And it says, and full of compassion, meaning he is yearning to do us good, full of compassion. He has a yearning in his heart to do us good. You know, God wants you well. He wants you healed and raised up. He wants to take uh, the spirit of heaviness on you, and he wants to put on the garments of praise. He wants to turn your mourning into dancing. <laughs> Amen. That's the kind of God uh, you serve. Amen. And he is disposed to favors. Amen. It's easy to get a favor from the Lord because he is full of compassion and he is very, very gracious. Now, another psalm of blessing, Psalms 103, Psalms 103, very familiar. But you know, uh, repetition is the cornerstone to learning. And you'll be surprised especially if you've been born again for some time, how when your inner man begins to hear the words of God, amen, how rejuvenated you'll become just by hearing the good news. Psalms 103.1, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, what are they? He forgives all thine iniquities. Amen? He's forgiven you of all iniquities, past, present, future. That means there's nothing, amen, that, that, that you could do, amen, to hinder uh, your healing. God has forgiven you. Amen? Now, you might have to let go condemnation, you might have to let go of that guilt and, and, and submit to the word of God. Submit to the fact that he has forgiven all of your iniquities. Amen. And, and, and allow that uh, fresh cleansing uh, to come into your soulful parts. But on God's part, there's nothing that can stop your healing. He's forgiven all of your iniquities. And the word of God says in, in Romans chapter 8, uh, 1, there is therefore now, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? So God doesn't want you in that guilt. He doesn't want you in that condemnation, uh, condemnation, that the word uh, condemnation, that, 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 that damns up what God would have for you. He doesn't want you to be damned up. 
He wants you to be open to receive the free favors, amen, that he wants to pour into your life. He wants you to receive his compassions, his tender mercies, and his goodwill. So it says that one of the benefits is that he forgives all of our iniquities. He heals us from all sickness and disease. He redeems our life from destruction. Amen. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercy. There's a crown on your head right now in the spirit that says loving kindness and tender mercy. He satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagle. Amen. So say what God says about you. Amen. Say it, say it, say it, say it, say it. Amen. Because he satisfies our mouth with good things. The, the good things are the goodness of his word. He satisfies our mouth with the goodness of his word. Amen. And his word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway. His word is life to us. Amen. Who find it and medicine to all of our flesh. So you've got to say what God has said about you. You just got to get in the habit of it. Amen. You just have to get into the discipline of it. Amen. You don't want to say, you know, I love her to death. You know, I'm just dying to get there. Amen. You want to clean up your vocabulary. You know, I just, I just love you. You know, I, I just, I just love you till it hurts. It, it just hurts me. I love you so much. You don't want to say things like that. You want to clean up your vocabulary and learn the discipline of saying what the word of God says. And it says, he satisfies our mouth with good things. Amen. His word is filled with goodness. His word is filled with compassion and mercy and virtue and blessing. Amen. You're redeemed from the curse of the law. And so it says in Psalm 107 and 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And what are we to say? We've been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. We've been forgiven all iniquities. Amen. We have the benefits of the kingdom of God. We've been healed from all manner of sickness and disease. Acts 10 and 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. What about doing good and healing all that were harassed of the devil? For God was with him. Amen? And so we have to say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, say so, say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, say so, say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, say so, say it. Amen? Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. He's redeemed me from the curse of the law. What was the curse of the law? It was poverty. It was sickness and disease. It was slavery to sin. Freedom or toward death. And eternal damnation. And so we've been redeemed from the curses. We've been redeemed from the curses of the law. Amen. And we need to say so. Praise God. And so uh, it says uh, he's forgiven all of our iniquities. He's healed us from all sickness and disease. He's redeemed our lives from destruction. He's put a crown on our head called loving kindness and tender mercies. And then he has satisfied our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. That sounds like Isaiah chapter 40, and Isaiah chapter 40 and 31. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord, and that word wait means to braid together, amen, like you braid hair. They that find themselves entwined with the Lord, abiding in the vine. They that abide in the Lord, they that wait on the Lord shall be renewed in their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and 
not faint. You know, if we look at that verse over there in Isaiah 40, you know, God tells his people uh, in verse, I believe it's verse 27, he says uh, to them, he says, why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. You know, Isaiah uh, says to the people of God, why do you keep saying your way is hid from the Lord? What? Why are you saying that the Lord doesn't see you? He's, he's not acknowledging you. His, his goodness and his blessing is, is hiding from you. Don't say that. You know, don't be a partaker of evil tidings. Amen? Uh, be a partaker. Uh, be a person who boldly declares the goodness of God. Remember, by grace are we saved through faith. By grace are we saved through faith. What does that mean? That means all of our days we need to have faith in the grace. We need to have faith in the grace. We need to have faith in the mercy. Faith always fights for the good report. Faith always fights for the good report. Good report. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. And faith is fighting for the good report. Faith is fighting for the good report. Faith doesn't say, the Lord doesn't see me. You know, you know, I've been out here struggling so long and, you know, it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better. You know, faith fights for the good report. Faith says, I'm not going to be weary and well doing. Amen. Because in due season, amen, my breakthrough is going to come. Amen. Faith agrees with the word of God. I know we all get weary sometimes. You know, we all get down. But faith says, I'm going to say what the word of God says because if I continue to say it, I'm going to see it. That's the law of faith. Amen. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. I believe with my heart, God raised him from the dead. And I am saved. Why? With my heart, I believe unto righteousness. And with my mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I call upon the name of the Lord, and I am saved. I am redeemed. I am healed. I am raised up. I am strengthened. I am delivered in the name of of Jesus. And so Isaiah tells the people, uh, don't say that your way is hidden from the Lord. Don't say God doesn't see you uh, in your infirmity. Don't say God can't be touched with the feelings of your infirmity. He says, have you not known? Have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creators of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He doesn't have to figure things out. He always, he already has them figured out. It says he gives power to the faint. He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Then he says something very interesting. He says, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall be renewed in their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Amen. And so tonight, uh, we say that we are not the people of God that faint. We are not the people that faint, but we are the people uh, that abide. We braid ourselves together Amen with the Lord. Amen. And we are renewed in strength. Uh, Job chapter uh, 22 and verse 6. Job chapter 22 and verse 6. Uh, you know, there's a need uh, in this hour, in this, is, in this time of the COVID, the pandemic. There is a need uh, for we as the people of God. Uh, to acquaint ourselves afresh 
with the word of God, to be renewed in our relationship with the Lord, to be renewed in our discipline in the word of God. The Job 22, 21 says, Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law of his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Uh, then shall thy lay up gold as dust, and thy gold of Orphra as the stones of the brook. Yes, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. And then it says in verse 28, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. It says, when men are cast down, then thou shalt say, there is a lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. You know, Job said, uh, by way of experience, he said he reacquainted himself with the Lord. He, he rededicated himself to the Lord. And he said he, he was at peace, and good began to come to him. Amen. He said he received the words of his mouth. Amen. And uh, uh, he laid up, uh, he received uh, the, the law of his mouth, and he laid uh, up his words in his heart. Job said he just got reacquainted with the Lord. He let his words abide in him. He, he said he let his words find uh, their rightful place in his heart. And he said uh, good came to him. And then he said he began to decree a thing, and it was established. Amen. And he says, when men were saying that they were cast down, he said, there is a lifting up. Amen. I say to you tonight, there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up for you. Amen. That burden is being removed. According to Isaiah 10 and 28, that, that burden is being removed. And that yoke is being destroyed because of the anointing of God in your life. Amen. So remember, he forgives all of your iniquities. He heals you from all sickness and disease. Amen. He redeems. He satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed uh, like the eagles. He redeems our lives from destruction, and he has crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercy. So that's the goodness of God. Amen. And we have faith in the grace and in the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's close tonight with Mark uh, chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Very, very familiar passage of scripture. Um, but we want to uh, put ourselves in remembrance of what the word of God says because it's so vital to our healing. It's so vital to our healing. This is a very famous woman, and uh, God wants to give us an example. He's given us an example of what to do uh, in times of sickness, in times of infirmity. It says in uh, verse 25 of Mark 5, a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, suffered many things of many physicians, had spent all that she had, and uh, was nothing better but rather grew worse. And then it says, uh, when she heard something exciting about Jesus, she heard something exciting about Jesus. You know, I want to give you four things that faith does. Faith takes, faith receives, faith acts, and faith talks. Faith takes. Faith will just take it. Faith receives it. 
and believes it. Faith acts on the word of God and faith says what God says about the circumstance and the situation. Now, what does she say? She says, if I may touch but his garment, I shall be made whole. Amen? Uh, faith is always revealed in your words. Remember that. You can tell if you're in faith by what you're saying. Amen? If you're talking sickness and disease, your faith is not in healing. But if you're talking healing, amen, wellness, wholeness, soundness, your faith is not in sickness and disease. Amen? So uh, faith is exposed or faith is always released in your words. You can identify if you're in faith or not by your words. Amen? And so uh, the word of God says in Mark 11, 23, uh, we have what we say. Amen? What we're saying is our faith talking or our unbelief talking. Amen? Jesus uh, gives a lesson to his disciples in, in, in Mark 11, verse 22. He says, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. And then in verse 23, he says, For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Then verse 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, what things shall you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, Amen. And you shall have them. Verse 24, when he says, believe you receive them, that Greek word means you believe you take it. You believe you take it. Take it when you pray. Amen. Why? Before you say amen in prayer, you have to take it. Glory to God. Whatever it is. But the word of God says, when you pray, believe you take it when you pray. That means you're going to have to do some study before you pray. You have to do some meditating before you pray. You're going to have to settle in your heart before you pray. Because when you pray, you're pulling the trigger. When you pray, you're taking the promise. When you pray, you're taking your healing. When you pray, you're taking yourself out of the hand, amen, of fear and doubt, fear of the pandemic. Fear that, that I'm going to get this, this, this COVID, this, 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 this virus, amen? When you pray, you're taking yourself, amen, out of that realm of doubt, lack of faith, unbelief, fear, which has torment, amen? And you're taking the promise of God, amen, who forgives all of your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Amen. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. Amen. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. When you pray, you ought to take it. When you pray, you ought to take it. Now, I was taught that you just keep praying and praying and praying and praying and praying until you get it. Amen. And, and that was my teaching. And that's what I did for years. Amen. But, uh, I, I, you know, as we go, you know, we learn more. And in actuality, you know, when you pray, you know, by the time you start praying, you should set up. You know, prayer is not just an aerobics, a spiritual aerobics. Whether you're praying in your native tongue or, or praying in other tongues, amen, it's not just an aerobics. Amen, there should be a, a goal to when you pray. When you pray, you should take it, amen. When you pray in tongues, you should be edified. Amen. You should be built up. You should, you should feel uh, charged as you come out of prayer. Amen. And so uh, the word of God says that uh, this woman said, amen, if I touch the hem of his garment, amen, verse 28, I 
will be made whole. So how do we say? What do we say? We say Isaiah 53, 5. By his stripes, I was healed. We say uh, Jeremiah 30, 17. I am restored to health, and I am healed of every wound. Amen? We are to say of the Lord. She said it. And then uh, we have to do something. The word of God says that we have to be doers of the word of God. James 1 and 22. And it says in verse 27, what did she do? It says she came in the press behind. She did something. Meaning she got in the press and even though the crowd was in front of her, she got in the press, she got in that crowd, even though she was behind and Jesus was way up there somewhere, she still began to do something. If you want your healing, you have to begin to do something. Amen. You have to begin to get in the word of God. Amen. You have to begin to, you know, take the communion and, and, and take it reverently. Just, just don't pick up, you know, some grape juice and some bread and say, Lord, Pastor Gaines said, I take my medicine, this communion. Oh. No, 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 no. Take it reverently. Take it, you know, after you've read your scriptures and prayed a while. Amen. Settle your heart. Tell your soul, this is the medicine. This is the medicine that God has for me. I'm discerning the Lord's body, and I'm made every whit whole. It says she said it, she did something, then it says she, she received it. She took it. Amen? She went in and fought the good fight of faith as she was in the press. Amen? She took it. She, she touched the hem of his garment, and she was made every bit whole. And then we said, you got to tell her. She began to tell everything. She had a testimony. Amen? So uh, four things to faith tonight. I want you, four takeaways I want you to take away tonight. Number one, faith will say it. Faith will do it. Faith will get, get at it, get after it. Amen? Faith receives it. Amen. Faith receives it. Follows through. Amen. And faith will tell. Amen. What are you going to tell? You're going to tell, amen, the testimony of what God did for you. Remember the demoniac? <laughs> the demoniac was uh, so thrilled that all those demon spirits were, 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 were loosed from him. And uh, it says as Jesus was getting in the boat, amen, and, and his disciples, it says that that demoniac who was delivered, he was getting in the boat too. He says, Lord, I'm going to be number 12. And, and Jesus says, no, 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 no. He says, I want you to go on home and tell what God has done for you and how he has had great mercy on you. Amen. My time is up. I thank you for yours. Amen. Remember, uh, Sunday morning, 10 a.m., we've been having heaven on earth. Amen. Right in the parking lot. Amen. And uh, come on out. And uh, it's only an hour. Amen. We know it's a little warm, so we cut the service considerably. Uh, come on out and, and be a part of us. Amen. And receive the signs and wonders and the miracles that God has for his people as we tabernacle together and put our faith, combine our faith together in his word. Amen. Uh, if you desire to give uh, uh, some type of a gift to the ministry, um, uh, we are so grateful. The Lord has been so good to us in this season. Uh, we lack nothing, but if you desire to sow your seed, in faith, amen. Uh, we do have uh, Spirit Life Ministries, Spirit Life Ministries International.org. You can go to that uh, on the internet, and we have several uh, different uh, types of uh, things that you can do uh, to sow into this ministry. Again, I'm Pastor Ken. My time is up. I thank you for yours. Healing belongs to you.
healing is the children.